vast majority of Canadians do. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Piscatos. Uh, Mr. Uh, Calkins. Thank you, Chair. Um, Minister, what evidence or what is your expected um, result from your department or what has your department told you insofar as if Bill C-71 were to pass in its current form, there would be a decrease in illegal guns crossing the border from the United States? Uh, the, uh, the legislation will help, as Mr. Brown has, has just explained, uh, will help in the, uh, in the tracing of, uh, of firearms. So, in order for, to trace something, it must be registered. You must have a registry in order to trace something. Is that correct? Uh, otherwise, no. what, otherwise, what would you trace against? You would trace against the commercial records maintained by the, by the retailers. In a registry? No. Yeah, it's, it is. Their, it's, a, well, it's, it's their, in, it's their inventory, it's a which is not maintained by government. It is you can't, maintained, they are their own you can't private trace property owners. Would you agree that you can't trace against records if the records don't exist? Uh, the, uh, the inventory that are kept by commercial enterprises, uh, which police can have access to, but not government. Without a warrant? No, no the police... The, the police require judicial authorization to access private property like they do in every other kind of private property. So, but you don't have any evidence, you don't have any statistical or empirical evidence uh, brought to you by your department that suggests that any measures in C-71 will actually reduce or stem the flow of illegal firearms from the United States. I have the professional pro uh, opinion of the Canadian okay. Association so, so you're welcome of, to, and you're welcome of Police to your Chiefs. Opinion. Um, but not the police officers or anybody else that you've managed to quote. What evidence does your department have to suggest C-71 will reduce gun crime associated with gangs? The, uh, the provisions that, uh, that make uh, uh, it possible to, uh, to trace uh, crime guns is, uh, is one element. Uh, the, uh, uh, the provision uh, with respect to transportation is, uh, is another element. Uh, the, uh, the overall context is the, guns and, gang, is the guns and Gangs Initiative, so which evidence, we will fund with so, the provinces. So give, so give me some numbers, Mr. Goodale. How many people on their way uh, to the gunsmith are committing crimes? The, you, you don't know the answer to the question. The That's objective, fine. It's okay to say you don't the know. objective of that of that provision is to make sure that police have the ability to detect unusual movements of restricted and prohibited weapons, not ordinary non-restricted firearms like hunting rifles, only restricted and prohibited. No, I, I'm fully, I'm, full, I'm, I'm fully versed actually. Uh, what are the provisions in this bill that will crack down on those who steal lawfully owned firearms? The, uh, uh, the provisions in the, uh, in the Act uh, make it less likely for uh, people who should not have firearms to acquire them in terms of the background That's not my checks. question, Mr. Goodell. My, good, my question to you was, what provisions in the bill are going to crack down on those who, who steal lawfully owned firearms? You said in your remarks that the, um, that the firearms are domestically sourced through theft. So I'm asking you, what provisions are you going to do to deal with the thieves who are stealing lawfully owned firearms? Uh, guns from lawfully owned or law-abiding citizens? The provisions in the Act will make it easier for the, for the police to track those weapons uh, and, in fact, find the sources of the crime. So, again, in order to track that, they're going to have to have a registry to track it against or trace it against. No, it's the commercial inventories that are maintained by private businesses. And you need to have uh, the appropriate reasonable grounds and judicial authorization to access those inventories. If you were to withdraw all the sections of the legislation that dealt with everything other than the increase of the background check for unanimous support of the bill, would you do so? The package that we have before us uh, is one that is reasonable, fair and balanced. Uh, and is, it's a package that hangs together. Uh, and I think it's uh, fair and reasonable. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the regular members of the committee before clause by clause of C-71 travel to a shooting range for a hands-on instructional day that would include meeting with the range officer for a question and answer session on firearms, firearm safety and firearms legislation. So received. Uh, you still have a minute left. Uh, you told me I had a minute before, but... I know, but... Uh, All right. He was, yeah. he was just joking. Uh, on the continuous Here's eligibility requirements, um, Mr. Goodell, you're, you're aware of what that means? Sorry? Continuous eligibility requirements. Do you know what that means? Yes. When I speak about that. So every day, every licensed firearms owner in Canada is flagged and uh, it's run, their names are run for to, to see whether or not um, they should be allowed to have their license. Would you agree with my assertion? It's, it's, it's a continuous process. Every day. Of examination. Yes, every day. Um, so given that, 
moving the requirements to 10 years from five years, what are you hoping and what evidence does your department have that the continuous eligibility process will pick up something to deal or pick up something that would alert them to um, uh, domestic violence? Uh, for example, when BLC 42 was passed, there was actually a clause in Bill C-42 that actually strengthened the provisions uh, and uh, cracked down on people uh, committing domestic violence. Is there anything in your bill that's going to crack down on people who commit domestic violence? There are uh, other legislative measures and a very, and a very extensive funded funding package uh, that we're implementing right now on gender-based violence. Are you talking about Bill okay. C-75? Because of the provisions? Uh, no, no, far beyond that. Mr. Garkins, uh, your time Thank you. is up. Uh, there is a motion before us. The motion is relevant to the current debate um, and, um, and the bill that is before us. So uh, at this point, we have to debate the motion. So, Mr. Calkins, do you want to present your motion again? Uh, well, I already presented my motion, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe that there is uh, a significant lack of understanding of actually what actually happens uh, in the law-abiding firearms community. I think the, the information campaign uh, that resulted in the current government um, uh, proposing their legislative package is based on a lot of misinformation, uh, and I think one of the best ways that we can do that is for folks in this committee, uh, all of the regular members of this committee, to actually spend a little bit of time down at a range. I think it would do us all a little bit of good. I think it would be a, a good time, it would be a fun time and an, and an informative time uh, for the members of the committee. If we're going to pass uh, legislation, if we're going to pass legislation or um, uh, pr pretend uh, to, to, uh, to know what we're talking about. I think it uh, behooves uh, the committee members, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, to visit a range. It's not going to be that, uh, just do something locally. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. Uh, and outside the normal hours of the, this committee, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's an onerous requirement at all. Mr. Spengerman. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. While I'm very interested in uh, the motion and interested in visiting a range at this point, I'm more interested in hearing Minister Goodale, so I move to adjourn debate. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, you have five minutes, actually. You have. Uh, okay, I was going to uh, get ahead of myself once again. Uh, those in favor of the motion? Those opposed? Motion adjourned. Okay. Debate's adjourned. And the most reasonable.